Hello, guys. It's, I'm back in the fuller kitchen, guys. I'm back in the fuller kitchen. Um, this is a fall feast. Um, this meal puts me in the mood for um, Thanksgiving. Um, I'm just going to show you the ingredients real quick. Um, if you would like to make this meal, and this meal is featuring uh, this Barilla Ready Pasta. I have seen some people, well, one person actually found it in Dollar Tree. Um, it was on sale for $1.25 a package. Um, it's ready in 60 seconds, okay? So I would like to try this. I hope it's not a waste of my good cheese because cheese is not cheap. I'm also trying this cheese for the first time. It's triple cheddar and it has cream cheese in it. And I, nine times out of 10, I always put cream cheese in my, um, macaroni and cheese. That's my secret ingredient and it really is good. So we're going to be making stuffed chicken breast. Okay. Breaded stuffed chicken breast. Okay. We're going to be stuffing it with this stuffing now. Um, you can get any variety. Um, I got the lower sodium chicken. You can get, they have cornbread stuffing. They have regular chicken. They have turkey, savory, whatever you want to do. Okay. But we're going to be stuffing breading the chicken breast and stuffing it with stuffing. Um, we need the olive oil spray and you'll see why. Um, because chicken breast is not fatty, listen, if you want to make your own chicken gravy or, or sauce to put on top of uh, your chicken, um, that's your business. I'm going with the Heinz Homestyle Gravy. I have the whole berry cranberry sauce. We're going to be making some yams. Uh, we got the crusties, honey cornbread, if you want jiffy, if you don't want cornbread, if you rather um, dinner rolls, whatever you would like. Um, and also, um, I we're gonna, for our veggie, we're going to be the whole... Oh, shit, talk, Eric. I'm sorry, y'all. I worked last night and I'm still up. Um, we're going to be doing the whole green beans. And I just love the tricolor green beans. It looks fancy. It has some carrots in it. And we're going to be adding some bacon to that. That's optional. And if you don't eat pork bacon, I'm going to show you after this clip what you can use. Um, I don't have the seasonings out. You'll see what seasonings I use. I say season your meat how you like it. Okay. Everybody's palate is different. Um, if you want to change up the sides and not do mac and cheese, if you, if you, you want greens instead of, uh, string beans, whatever, but this is just a comfort meal. It, I, I'm just excited. My favorite time of year is here. It's like 50 something degrees outside. It has a little chill. This is just a nice comfort meal that puts me in the mood for the holidays. I almost told the cashier, um, happy holidays when I was leaving out of the supermarket. Okay. Cause I felt like I was going home to prepare a holiday meal. Okay. So stay tuned for, um, the in store that I have about a pork bacon substitute. If you don't eat pork. Okay. Let's get cooking. You're also going to need breadcrumbs. Okay. Um, I have the seasoned breadcrumbs, okay, with Romano cheese, but uh, you're also going to need breadcrumbs, and I also add a little bit uh, extra Parmesan cheese to my breading, but we'll get into that when we do the seasoning. If you don't eat pork, this is a good um, substitute. It's a turkey bacon made from the meat from the turkey thighs, which are more fatty, okay? It will give your um, vegetables a nice smoky taste. Um, if you don't eat pork bacon, look for this. i never seen this before. Um, I won't get it today, but this is something that I would like to try. We're going to be making the yams from scratch. If you're in a time crunch, you can uh, find cornbread already made. It just has an aftertaste to me. I don't know if it's the preservatives, but... Um, and look at the price. I mean, if you use Jiffy, a box of Jiffy is 50 cents. The most, 75. Five dollars? I, I don't know. They do have these mini cornbread rolls. And this is, you know, a dollar. That's in my price range. Um, I don't know. They just look like they have preservatives, guys. So it looks like they're going to have that aftertaste. You know what I mean? 
I don't know. I mean, this would be perfect. I mean, you're making a meal for two people. You don't want a lot of leftovers or you don't want to overindulge. This size would be perfect, but it just screams, I don't know, that it won't taste homemade, if that makes sense. Okay, guys, um, I'm not going to go through each complete step with you um, to save time for video purposes because this video would be long as hell. How's everybody doing? So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, peel the yams and slice them up. Um, you can use your own yams. You could use canned yams. I have a guest here. He can't see the camera. Um, I'll show you guys him in a second. He is running around with his Halloween costume that I bought. But anyway, I'm going to start uh, peeling these yams and I'll show you how I slice them up. Everybody can do it differently. But uh, let's get cooking. Okay, guys, I gave the yams um, a rough chop. Um, you can cut them up how you want. Um, this meal is for two to four people. I really don't want leftovers. I'm going to be doing a three-day cleanse tomorrow. I know, last-minute vacation crunch. I'm crazy, but don't judge me. So here are the yams cut up. I'm going to mix everything together in a bowl and transfer it back to the pan. Um just to make sure everything's coated evenly, I have some melted butter, okay? Maybe probably like a half a stick. Guys, I, I don't measure, I guesstimate, so don't judge me. I'm gonna put some cinnamon. A little bit of nutmeg, a little bit, not crazy. We're not making sweet potato pie. And I found this maple bourbon flavored sugar. And I gave it a taste. It's pretty good. Um, I found it at Big Lots. It says sprinkle it in your coffee, tea, or popcorn. I'm going to try it in the yams. Why not? It does have a, like, somewhat bourbon flavor, okay? Um, so I'm just going to toss these, okay? The melted butter. I'm also going to sprinkle some regular sugar in here as well, okay? Hold on, guys. I'm going to try not to add um, regular sugar, okay? Here what I have is some crushed pineapple, okay? And if you haven't tried pineapples in your candy yams, you do not know what's missing. I had it cooked that way. I want the juice. I haven't cooked, I had it cooked that way at a soul food restaurant and I've been putting pineapples in my yams ever since. Some people put, um, some people put peaches and you can do that as well. And I have that agave from Dollar Tree. And, um, instead of using regular sugar or I usually put maple syrup, log cabin maple syrup to be exact. Instead of using that, God, Jesus, I don't, Lord, this is, we're going to see, guys. We're going to see. Typically in my yams, I would put cinnamon, sugar, butter, the syrup, the crushed pineapples, and top them with marshmallows when they're almost finished. But we just experimenting today, guys. Okay? And this pan may seem too small, but it's not. gonna bake this and we'll add the marshmallows later I didn't want to use regular sugar because it already has sugar from the pineapples it already has um, the sprinkle of that maple bourbon sugar and the agave 
I'm gonna try to see how that works out, okay? So um, this is, we're just gonna cover this tightly and bake it. And um, when it gets close to done, we'll uncover it and add the marshmallows, okay? Give it a taste test, make sure it's sweet enough. I can't lie to y'all. Um, <laughs> I did sprinkle just now a tablespoon of um, sugar on top <coughs> and I am gonna drizzle it with some maple syrup, I know. But I won't be using as much as I would have been using if uh, I didn't have the agave. I would've been putting much more. So I'm trying to, trying to cut down on my sugar and as you can see, I hardly have anything left so that's a good thing. Um, so I'm going to cover this and it'll be ready for the oven. Okay, so we're going to be making the mac and cheese. And if you know anything about me, I'm always on the go. I, I cook fast and, um, I'm pleased and whoever I cook for are pleased with the results. Long story short. When you don't have a lot of time, you're at work, or you're busy and you want a home-cooked meal, I'm always looking for faster, way to, faster ways to do things. Anyway, I'm going to be trying this Barilla Ready Pasta. I don't know how good it is. There are other YouTube videos if you're interested in it. We're going to be giving it a try. What you do is you gently knead the pouch, okay? Tear vent prior to cooking. If you do it in the microwave, you microwave for 60 seconds or stove top. Pour pasta and two teaspoons of olive oil in skillet. Stir two to four minutes until heated. Then add your favorite ingredients and enjoy. We're not doing all of that. I'm not putting on top of the stove. If I was going to put pasta on top of the stove, I would have bought the regular pasta. So, tearing the pouch. 60 seconds. That's one minute. So we're going to do al dente because we're going to be baking this in the oven for the macaroni and cheese. So here we go. Okay, it has been 60 seconds and I think it's cooked. It's, it's cooked. The only thing that I question, guys, is why is it so dark? I've never it definitely seems like 60 seconds is not enough but we're going to be continuing the cooking process in the oven I don't know it's a quick idea I, I, I don't know <laughs> I don't know I have to wait till the it's completed to, to tell you what I think okay but it is al dente 60 seconds i don't know if i believe 60 seconds i think it could have went 120 seconds two minutes okay so what we're going to do now is melted butter okay and being that i'm making a smaller size pan of course i'm not going to use as much as you know if i was making a larger pan i'd put a whole stick of butter um I would put possibly um, three eggs. Right now, I just have a egg. Okay, one egg. Okay. I'm going to add some milk. Normally, I get canned milk, but I just didn't. Um, so, I'm just adding some milk, and this is 2% milk. You can add whatever kind of milk you want. I found this cheese. And I always put cream cheese in my macaroni and cheese. That's my secret ingredient. The only other cheese that I put in my macaroni and cheese that I didn't buy was Gouda. But because, listen, cheese is expensive. It was $5 just for two of these bags. And that was a sale. I don't know how these noodles are. I'm not going to not gonna drop a whole bucket of money into cheese. Okay? And I like my macaroni and cheese very cheesy. I'm going to try to change the camera angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to add one full bag of the cheese, and this is eight ounces, and then I'm going to um, stir it up, and then before I add more cheese, it's not a lot of pasta in here, so I don't need as much cheese as I normally would. I 
I don't know, guys. I mean, if you want to try the pasta, I would say it can cook longer than um, 60 seconds. Or maybe try boiling it. But I'm saying if you're going to boil it, just get the regular pasta. Don't fool around. I just want to make sure the cheese is distributed evenly along with the butter and the milk. Almost there. I mean, like I said, this is, you know, for two people, you'll have dinner and then leftovers. I'm not, like I said, because first of all, sometimes leftovers get thrown away here, okay? Sometimes you don't feel like it the next day. Um, and, um, and like I told you, I'm trying to get my life together. I'm going to add a little bit more cheese. I'm not going to add the whole entire bag. Like I said, it's not a lot of pasta here. But I do want this to be cheesy. And I don't add a lot of salt and pepper to the macaroni and cheese. Um, especially because I add a lot of cheese. The cheese has a lot of salt in it. You don't want to... Like I said, you always can add salt to taste. You know, after your food is cooked, if it's not enough salt in it. I don't know. I don't know about these noodles, guys. We're gonna have to wait. Until it's done, because I don't know, suspect. They could be darker because it's not done all the way. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just the rest of the butter. Whatever wraps were left and I'm going to I am going to sprinkle with some salt and some pepper but again not a lot and I really should have mixed it up and did that I really should have but I didn't don't do what I do don't do what I do really should mix it up together So we have eggs, milk, butter, the pasta, and the cheeses. Cover that with aluminum foil and it will bake with the yams. Okay guys, um, for video purposes, I'll just show you how I season the chicken and how I bread it real quick. Um, Again, season it how you like. These are seasonings that I like. I have garlic powder. Okay, and these chicken cutlets are nice and flat. They're nice and thin, and they're a nice size. Okay, and what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So that's garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, pepper. Let me get the salt. Okay, and we'll do the same thing to the other side. I'm even going to add some parsley flakes, okay? I keep my dried parsley flakes in the fridge. I love parsley. And there is some parsley in the um, breadcrumb mixture, I believe. Okay, so I'm going to flip them and season the other side the same. Okay, what we have is... Um, I have three bowls set up. Flour, egg, breadcrumb. Just adding some Parmesan cheese to the breadcrumb mixture. Okay. Some fresh grated. So what I do is I dip a cutlet in the flour, 
okay? Make sure it's coated evenly. Then I dip the cutlet in the egg. And then the breadcrumb mixture, okay? And make sure it's coated. The egg kind of helps it stay coated, okay? Now, how you season the chicken, adding Parmesan cheese to the breadcrumbs, that's up to you. So we're going to keep it going. Flour, egg, breadcrumb. Make sure you coat them evenly. And we're going to keep the train going. Okay, guys, we're getting down to the star of the dish. I have breaded all of the cutlets. I have a pan that I lined with some parchment paper, nonstick parchment paper. We're going to stuff the cutlets now, okay? So basically, I'm going to take one cutlet. I already made the stuffing, and just follow the instructions, okay? Follow the instructions, and then all you're going to do is close it up. A toothpick or anything that you have that will hold it together. Okay, and don't overstuff them. You don't have to overstuff them, okay? And we're just going to keep going until we stuff all of the cutlets, okay? And the chicken doesn't take long to cook. And that's just to hold it closed. And we're going to keep going, guys. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we have all of the chicken cutlets. There's six of them. Um, they're breaded, they're stuffed, and they're ready to go. This really was a nice pack. Um, full cutlets, um, a very nice size. I have never seen cutlets this large before. And what we're going to do now is spray them with some olive oil spray. Um, if you have olive oil, you can drizzle it, but it's not going to coat them evenly. And you really want to uh, make sure... Ooh, be careful. This stuff is high powered. You want to make sure that these are uh, sprayed, okay? Oh my God. This is some high powered spray. I've actually never um, used this before. This happened to be on sale. You can get whatever brand you want. So I sprayed them and right now I have the oven preheated and everything's going to go in the oven. Chicken cooks fast, so don't overcook it because it's going to be dry, okay? Um... This is gonna be delicious, guys. Okay, guys, I apologize for you seeing my stomach most of the video, and I also apologize for Mickey Mouse in the background, but I wasn't planning to have chunk today, and this is a meal I wanted to have today, and I wanted to record it. Right now, the yams are in the oven, the mac and cheese is in the oven, and the chicken cutlets are in the oven. And what we're going to do now is the string beans, okay? Right now, what I got going on in the pan, okay, I got two strips of bacon, that's it. Because you don't want bacon to take over the dish, okay? And that's all you taste. So right now, I have two strips of bacon. I'm just cooking it a little bit. And I'm going to add the string beans. I put a little olive oil on the bottom of this pan 
and a little bit of butter because that's what I would add to my vegetables if I was cooking them by themselves. Let me turn the heat down. It's a little bit too hot. I went out while I was out shopping yesterday, guys. I was looking for better mounts so I have better angles. I'm just going to have to order the one I've seen on Amazon when I come back from vacation because it's kind of hard for you to see what I'm doing. That's why we have all these crazy angles. I had to heat up a little bit too high. So I just wanted to brown the bacon a little bit so it's not rubbery, even though it would be cooked. But also, you'll have that bacon grease and that flavor that's going to go with the uh, vegetables. So I like the um, tricolor um, petite. Um, whole green beans with carrots. Um, you could do regular string beans. You can do Brussels sprouts. You can do whatever green vegetable that you like. I, on the other hand, um, have made this dish before with everything that I'm making today. So um, that's why I chose this. And I haven't had string beans in a while. So. Now, of course, if you're having more people, and I'm not going to add any butter to this because the vegetables are frozen, so as they thaw, that's going to add water. I'm not going to add any water, okay? Because uh, the vegetables, as they thaw, that will add the water, okay? I'm just mixing them all up in here, and then I'm going to season them with my go-to seasonings, a little onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Okay, those are my go-to seasonings. Okay, that's what I like on most of my food. I, I love garlic, so garlic's going to be in everything. Okay? So hold on, let me get the seasoning. So, just a little bit of onion powder. We don't have to go crazy. Pepper. Alright, guys, you can't see. I really need to get that other mouth. I did that already. Garlic powder. Oh my garlic. Oh my garlic. Salt. And don't have to go crazy. You cut the TV off, Chunk. You don't have to go crazy with the salt because remember the bacon has some salt in it. Gonna hit it with um this spray is crazy. And I'm gonna turn down the heat. I'm gonna turn down the heat and let these cook. Okay? We got everything else going on in the oven. And then we'll, I'll save the cornbread for last. Cornbread is quick. Okay? Okay, guys. Our vegetables are cooking. I added the other bag. So I have two bags. Because that wasn't going to be enough vegetables. Okay? Um, I have it covered. I am just have to cover off so you guys can see. Also, our chicken is completed. This is our stuffing. Our stuffed chicken breast. Breaded stuffed chicken breast. Okay? I'm not saying I'm the first one to do this, but I just put it together with something that I like. Turkey's very dry. I mean, if, you, if you're having a small Thanksgiving and, you know, you don't want to mess with a turkey, this would be a good option as well, okay? And in the oven is the yams and the mac and cheese. I'm kind of on the fence with this ready pasta. I think this is a one and done, meaning I tried it and I won't try it again. Um, I'll show you what's going on in the oven. The pasta is just very dark. It's not the same color as regular mac and cheese, which I, I really could not understand. But that's the mac and cheese. Um, we have the yams going. I'm going to add, um, when they're almost cooking, I'm going to add um, the marshmallows to the top. Okay, I'm not going to add the marshmallows now. But I think this Barilla Ready Pasta is a one and done. Um, I just wanted to try it because I just wanted to try it and uh, we only live once so um, stick to regular pasta okay guys everything is done um, I'll just have to heat the gravy up um, 
I can't wait to eat y'all the cranberry sauce is chilling in the fridge and this is a nice prelude into Thanksgiving dinner and if you have a small family and or if you're just not feeling like turkey and cooking a big dinner this would be a great Friendsgiving um, dinner this would be a great Thanksgiving dinner um, it's going to be so delicious and guess what I took a bite you see it's a missing corner and that mac and cheese I took a bite of that mac and cheese and it is the bomb I <laughs> I can't say I'll never buy that pasta again I know I said I'll never buy the Barilla ready ready boil or ready pasta whatever they call it but you know what this mac and cheese is the bomb.com I'm loving this cheese combination um, with the cream cheese mixed in it and I'm telling you this is a bomb ass meal um, thanks for watching I'm gonna plate everything up and uh, dig in okay guys getting ready to dig in again thank you for watching this video and if you make this or if you have made something similar let me know in the comments I'll see you soon